Okay, so the other night uh, when I was sharing on the live stream, uh, uh, I ended by reading to you out of the book of Jude. And it had been a few months since I had uh, uh, read Jude and, and pondered on, on uh, a lot of the things that the letter uh, was pointing to and pointing out. And it kind of made me think a lot uh, as the week, uh, as, as the scriptures regularly and normally do with me. It just makes me think about it throughout the week, especially when I'm at work or driving to work, uh, yeah, pondering uh, what God is saying. You know, I love how in John 14, 26, and this is uh, really one of my favorite verses of many favorite verses that I have, but this is one of my favorites. It's John 14, 26. It says that the, the Holy Spirit is our comforter, our counselor, our teacher, and he will bring all things to remembrance whatsoever that the Lord has taught us. And, you know, to, to you know, Paul, another thing that, you know, Paul said this uh, in, in, in Ephesians chapter six, he says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. The Amplified Version uh, states it as uh, be strong in your union with him. And this is where we find our strength. And also, I'll point out one more thing. It says, in the power of his might. So where do we receive power? Well, in, in the book of Acts, it says that we receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon us. So this is where we find the strength in our walk and in our union with him is by the guiding and leading of the Holy Spirit in our life. And it's something that so so many here in, in this in this age and time that we're living in, ha, uh, simply have forgotten, forgotten that the Holy Spirit is God, that Jesus Christ himself, and, and he pointed this out in, in, in John chapter 14 as well, that J Jesus himself said that I'm not leaving you alone. I'm going to leave you with my Holy Spirit, my comforter, my counselor, my teacher. You will not be left alone. So it's easy to say that we love God this and we, oh, I love me some Jesus, but I'm going to reject his very spirit that he left here with me to lead and guide my walk. He died on the cross that his very spirit would no longer dwell in a temple, in a, in a, in a building made out of brick and stone, rather my very own heart. And this is, it, this, in this hour, in this time that we're living in, this is what we're seeing. Look across YouTube, all across YouTube. Look, this is what we're seeing. We're witnessing professing Christians. They have the form, but they're rejecting the power. They have a form of godliness. They profess Jesus' name. They profess that they're Christians, but they reject his very Holy Spirit. They don't want the Holy Spirit to be God in their life. They want to continue to be God in their life. And it made me think about this all week long as we, uh, you know, it, you can also point to the, the, the party at the bottom, bottom of the mountain in the days of Moses. You know, they built that golden calf, that idol. They built that idol in the name of God. And, you know, as we look around social media today, we see many people, they're, they're coming together in, in fellowship. And see, fellowship is not always good. Uh, in Ephesians chapter 5, it says to, to not have fellowship with darkness. So we see that just because it's fellowship doesn't make it godly. We can have fellowship with darkness. We can have fellowship with the kingdom of, of darkness and, and these uh, people here that are causing so many uh, to go astray. And it made me think, and I'll get to this now, it made me, it made me think throughout the week, what is the foundation our, of our faith? Is it, is it personality or is it doctrine? Is it, is it being around what's popular or is it, if need be, spending the alone quiet time with the Lord Jesus Christ? What is the foundation of our faith? What, what is the reasoning behind why we do what we do? When I turn on or when you turn on a, a social media or, or, or click on a video, are you clicking on that, that message 
because you want a closer walk with God that you want to know him? Or are you clicking on that message because Betsy and Joe and 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 Minnie Mo and Jack, you know, they're they're your click, they're your friends, and you like them and you love their personality, and that's why you're there. And they make it feel they make you feel like you're no you're not lonely when you get to hear their voice. None of us want to be lonely. No, none of us want to be uh, uh, feel like we're all out on an island by ourselves. But here's the thing. There are times and seasons in, in, our, in our life where there's only going to be a few people walking down that path with us. And, and to be quite frank with you, m majority of life is that way, where there's not going to be a whole lot of folks walking with you. You know, one of the things I've noticed here, and this, I'll say this before I get into Jude here, but one of the things I've noticed, you know, over the last uh, uh, month or two that uh, I've, I've gotten a lot of more positive remarks. And, oh, Marcus, you know, you're such a great person. You're such a wonderful teacher. And that's wonderful and all. You know, I mean, especially when you, you, you go long stretches when you all you're hearing is people tear you down. But let me say this. And this is one of the things that I, I kind of highlighted in the live stream the other night where it said, where, where, where Paul was teaching in, in 2 Timothy chapter uh, four verse two. He said something very interesting. A lot of times, people, uh, a, a lot of us, and it's easy to do this when we're reading the scripture. It's easy to overlook things. So I say people, but but we all do it from time to time. Uh, look over things in the scripture. But Paul said something very interesting here. He said, "Be instant in season, out of season. Be instant in season, out of season." So what Paul's saying right there is. Whether it's popular, whether it's not, whether it's received, whether it's not received, whether you're accepted, whether you're rejected, you have a mission and that is to preach the word, to stand firm and preach the word, preach the doc. Don't, don't make it about your personality. Don't make it about how many people like you or don't like you or how many people are praising you or not praising you. But stand firm and, 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 and stay on the narrow path. And that's, this is why it's called the narrow path. Because many ain't going to choose. Many, many, I, said, I said many ain't. Many ain't going to choose to stay on that path. Many are going to choose the path of popularity. Many are, are going to choose to follow the sheeple. Right on down the cliff because... It's and you've been hearing me use this term the last several weeks, uh, a social media clubbing, and this is what many folks are doing. They're not willing to maybe be on that path of the of, of the few. They're not willing to go down that path of the few. And there's like I said, there's many seasons and many times in our life that it, there's not going to be a lot of people walking with us because the crowd is very fickle. We saw this with Jesus when uh, Jesus and Barabbas, uh, how, how, the, the, how the crowd, they praised Jesus and followed Jesus, but so quickly turned, so quickly turned on Jesus. And they shouted, Barabbas, 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 set him free. And so it's great and all that, you know, you know, a lot of you who have been saying the kind things about me, that's lovely and all. But the honest truth, I'm not being pessimistic here, but I'm actually being realistic. The honest truth is that 75% of you in a month or two will be gone. Because we live in a fickle time and a fickle generation where folks don't want us to, to see the course out or walk the course out. It's uh, just a fad. And we don't want to make our faith a fad. We don't want to be tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine. We don't want to be, and we should not want to be, I, I should, I'll say it that way. We should not want to be people who make it about personality rather than doctrine. Make it about someone's charismatic behavior and personality and likability whether than whether truth or doctrine. We should make it about Jesus Christ, whether, uh, 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 instead, excuse me, instead of someone's cute smile and, and charm. Are we going to make it about Christ? And so when I come to this camera, 
this is my my desire this is my focus and this is what this is my prayer that you grow and uh, grow stronger in the Lord and in the power of his might that I provoke you to search the scriptures that I provoke you to to seek the Lord Jesus Christ more and more you know I've been through a lot of things in my life a lot of a lot of heartbreaks and a, a lot of sad times and a lot of lonely times but I'll, I'll tell you this it's those times that has made me realize that the Lord has always had my back, had my front, my side, and everything else. That he's always been, been with me. And so it's those lonely times, those times where we have, where, those times where that we're forced to make a decision who we're going to follow. Because it's easy to say, hey, you know what, I'll just go ahead and follow the crowd because it's more lively over there. I'll go follow this teacher or, 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 or preacher over here who has a big following and he can play the guitar and he can sing and all this other stuff and I'll make it about all that. I'll make it about all the outward stuff. That way I can hide the issues of my heart. And we human beings, are we, we good at that. We're good at hiding the issues of our heart. But you know, one of the things that you heard me share this a couple of weeks back and then I'll get into Jude here. That, you know, the word of God, when we read the word, the word will read us. You know, and, and that's not necessarily a Bible verse, but I, I'll point you to John, or it's not John, but uh, Hebrews ch chapter four, verse 12. And it says that the, that the word of God is alive and powerful. These are not dead words on, on some paper here. The, the, the word of God is living, breathing. The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, and is a discerner of the spirit and cuts through the very depths and heart of our soul, the very bone marrow, the very depths of our soul. It is a discerner. And see, and the word of God will expose the issues of our heart. And I don't say, when I say expose, I mean that in a good way. It's a good thing when we get exposed. It's a good thing that that exposure takes place. That means light has shined upon something to cause it to be exposed. We don't want to be a people who continue just to hide in the in the cracks in the corners in the darkness. Because to be quite frank with you, uh that's where all the roaches hang out. The roaches hang out in the corners and the cracks and behind the crevices of the walls, and we don't want to be known for people who do that. And again, that's what Paul was saying in Ephesians chapter 5, that we have uh, no fellowship with darkness. Because that's where, where you will find all the, 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 the creatures that crawl, creep and crawl in the darkness of the night. We, you'll find it there. And you see here on social media, when the light gets turned on, when the truth gets spoken, when the word of God gets preached, they, they split. They roll. They, they don't want none of that. And so I'll say this again, it's, it's nice and all, and, I, and like I said, the last month or so, I've gotten far more positive things and that people saying things about me, but here's the deal, it's not about Marcus. It's not, not about whether you like me or don't like me. It's about, is truth being spoken? And I, I, I pray with all my heart that you're here for the right reason, that you're here because you're drawing closer to Jesus Christ. Not, not drawing closer to Marcus, but drawing closer to Jesus Christ. That is my prayer and desire for you. Because I, I'll say this again, there are seasons in life where it gets lonely, it gets hard. And I have compassion for folks that go through dark seasons because when I went through those dark seasons, there were very, very, very few who stayed the course because everybody, and I'll say this last thing and I promise I'll get into Jude. I'll say this last thing. Everybody starts with you on the starting line, 
You know, that starting starting stripe there. Everybody's, everyone's, it's like a marathon. It's like 100 runners. Everyone's with you at the starting line. But it's, it's so, it's so funny. And I say this, and I say this from the bottom of my heart. It's just, and I don't mean that it's funny, but it's funny how few will cross the line with you, the finish line with you. How so few. And this is why Paul said to, to run the race. Let us run this race. Let us follow Jesus. Let us hunger after truth. I want to take you now to the book of Jude here. A book that, you know, a letter that so many folks, they, they want to kind of, they kind of blow off because it, it, it tears apart the, the lifestyle uh, that they live in. And again, it goes back to the question, why are we here? Why do we, why do we have, why, why are you following the pastor that you're following? Or the teacher that you're following, or why do you sh come show up to, to social media, you know, one or two times a week, or maybe some of you it's ten times a day. I don't know. Why are you showing up? Is it f to get a closer relationship with the Lord God Almighty, or is it because you're looking for entertainment? Jude verse one, and I'm reading this out of the Amplified Version. Jude, a bond servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James writes this letter to those who are called, or excuse me, to those who are the called, God's chosen ones, the elect, dearly beloved by God the Father and kept secure and set apart for Jesus Christ. It makes me think about 1 Peter 2, 9, that we're the set apart people, that we're, we're the chosen generation, a peculiar people. Is that you? Are you set apart for Christ? Or are you just professing Jesus and you still set apart for the world? You still living for the world? You still rejecting the Holy Spirit that Jesus died on the cross to place in your heart? Are you still rejecting his very spirit? You say that I've given Jesus lip service. That's good enough. Well, let me continue to reading here. Because this is, a, this is a, a prevalent doctrine, a, a prevalent false doctrine, I would say, that's floating around today. Verse two here in Jude. May mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. That's a powerful prayer there. Filling your heart with the spiritual well-being and serenity, sincerity, excuse me, sincerity experienced by those. Actually, it's serenity. I, I'm sorry, I said sincerity. It's serenity. It's serenity. Filling your heart with the spiritual well-being and serenity experienced by those who walk closely with God. So don't think you're going to go off, do your own thing, live your life your, your own way, and then you're going to have the peace of God uh, leading and ruling in your heart. Don't, don't be deceived by that. Because there are many people teaching folks and telling folks, that you can live with it whichever way you want to live. That that look, there are people out here. This is amazing. This blows. This blows. I, I look. <laughs> telling folks that we ain't got to follow Jesus. Don't follow Jesus. And you got people like receiving it openly, as 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 uh, Paul stated in Second Corinthians chapter eleven. You're receiving the deception so beautifully. You're receiving these charming, charismatic teachers openly and you're receiving them in your life so beautifully. You're making it about people. You're making it about teachers. You, you have forgotten Jesus. You have forgotten the Lord Jesus Christ. You are rejecting his Holy Spirit that produces the, the fruit of God in your life. You're making this about people. You're following cliques. You're following crowds of people. Regardless of the way they live, you don't care. Jesus, in, in Matthew chapter 7, warned us and told us that we, we will know who's who. You, you will know them by their fruit. Beware of wolves who come to you dressed as harmless, gentle, innocent sheep. Quoting, quoting that to you out of the Amplified Version. This is how these wolves show up. 
they show up to you as harmless, gentle, innocent sheep. Meh. Meh. Oh, look at that cute little, oh, he's so cute. He's so cute. He has such a cute smile. Oh, Bubby. Oh, Bubby, I love your preaching. Oh, Bubby. I love the way you sing. You've got, you've got a great voice. I love your song. I love your guitar playing. Oh, Bubby, Bubby, Bubby. We make it about Bubby's personality and talent, and we, and we forget about Jesus. This is what Paul warned us of. He says, I'm afraid that you're allowing these false teachers, these masquerading apostles, this is 2 Corinthians chapter 11, I'm afraid that you're allowing them, just as Satan deceived and beguiled Eve in the garden, I'm afraid that you're allowing these teachers to do the same very thing to you. Just as Eve received in the deception beautifully, now here you are from these false teachers, these false apostles. You're receiving in the deception so beautifully, beautifully from them. Now this is 2 Corinthians chapter 11. I encourage you, and I, you've, you've been hearing me uh, cite that passage quite a bit here the last couple of months. I encourage you to dig in, not, not to just listen to Marcus, but to dig into the word for yourself, to get, to get, to get in that drawer. I'm sure there's a drawer in your kitchen where you, you can find a fork and a steak knife. And I'm telling you, to, it's, it's time that we, we dig into to the drawer to find to, to the drawer for ourselves to get our utensils and to get into the word of God and get in there. As Psalms 19 uh, verse 10 says that the, the word of God is more desired than that of gold. More desirable than gold. Oh, but, but, it, but, but it wasn't done when, when it said that. He said sweet, but it's sweet like honey. Sweet like honey dripping from the honeycomb. And see, we got to get to a place where we stop making it about Bubby and Bubby's cute smile and Bubby's singing ability and Bubby's guitar playing and rapture burger recipe. Because Bubby ain't going to get you into the, the streets of gold. Okay. And, you, you know, when, when, we, when we stand before Jesus on that day. You know, we can scream for Bubby and, and Pastor and all our friends and our YouTube clicks and all the people. But, you know, here it is. Uh, I, I don't know if this is a spoiler alert or anything. But let me share something with you. We're going to be standing before Jesus uh, on a one-on-one. -on -one. We won't be able to call for Bubby or your favorite pastor or who, who, who had a great voice or sung or played the guitar. We won't be able to call for all them people. It's going to be us and Jesus. And I believe Jesus, one of the questions he's going to ask us is, Marcus, what did you do with my word? And what did you do with my Holy Spirit that I left to live in your heart, to reign in your heart, to lead and guide your walk? What did you do with that? Did you reject my Holy Spirit? Did you choose to uh, uh, hang around a companion of fools? Now, there's a promise in Proverbs that talks about a companion of fools. And I'll let you look that up for yourself. I'm sure you can find it if you Google it. A companion of fools. And it wasn't a good, it wasn't a good uh, forecast for what happens to a companion of fools. Let me continue here in Jude. Jude chapter, or excuse me, Jude, because there's only one, uh, there is no chapters in Jude, just one, one book here, this one uh, one passage here. So Jude first two, may mercy and peace and love be multiplied to you, filling your heart with spiritual well-being and serenity experienced by those who walk closely with God. Verse three, here we go. And it's, it's, it's getting good here. It's getting good because, you know, they were having this problem back then in that day where people were saying, oh, just pray this prayer. God's grace covers it. All you got to do is pray a one-time prayer and God's grace will cover it all. You can live how you want. You can act like you want. You can do what you want. You can, you, you know, do, 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 do whatever you want. God's got you covered. Live for the devil. Devil worship. I, I can say other stuff, but 
I think you got the point. So they were having this issue back then. Verse 3. So a warning was given here because of this. Beloved, while I was making every effort to write you about our common salvation, and we should make efforts. We should make every effort to sound the alarm, every effort to wake up the deaf ears. We should make every effort. I was compelled to write you, urgently appealing that you fight strenuously for the defense of the faith which was once for all handed down to the saints, the faith that is the sum of the Christian belief that was given verbally to believers. Oh, but here it is. Here it is. Verse four. I, 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 want, I want you to listen. I, I know we're 20, 26 minutes in and I know a lot of people drop off at 59 seconds, but hopefully there are some of you left to hear this. Verse four, for certain people have crept in. Man, I don't like creeps. Because this is what creeps do. Creeps like to creep. creep. They, they like to creep in, right? Creeps like to creep. This is what creeps do. And this is what I'm talking about. Roaches. How roaches, they, 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 they you know, the things that, that creep and crawl, they always do it in the dark place. For certain people have crept in unnoticed. Just as if they were sneaking in by a side door. And I want to stop there for a second. You know, Paul warned of this in 2 uh, Timothy chapter uh, 3. And this is verses 5 through 7. Paul was speaking of those who uh, uh, creeped in, who, who come in and deceived individuals. I encourage you to, to write the, the, that passage down, 2 Timothy chapter 3, uh, verses uh, 5 through 7. Also, Jesus in John chapter 10, he warned of those who, these hirelings, that, that they, they came in through the side door. They didn't come in through the, through the gate. They came in through a side door. And now here we are in Jude. We're getting another warning of this. People who come in, in unnoticed by a side door. In other words, not by the truth. They're not standing on truth. No, they're coming in with their own doctrines, their own beliefs, their own feelings, their own charisma, their own charm, and all this other stuff. But yeah, here's the deal. And again, Paul said this. I've, I'm afraid that just as Satan beguiled Eve, in other words, Satan charmed Eve, gave her uh, charismatic, uh, Satan used charisma and enchanting behavior, sung songs to her, told Eve how wonderful she was for a purpose. To, not, not to exhort her in the faith. There's nothing wrong with exhorting people and encouraging people in the faith to continue to press on. But, but Satan's goal here was to pull Eve out of the faith. So are, 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 we, are, we, heeding, are we heeding the warnings? Because these seducing spirits as the Holy Spirit gave a distinct warning in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, that the Holy Spirit distinctly and expressly declares that in latter times, do you believe that we're in the last days? I do. That in latter times, some would depart from the faith, giving attention, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines that demons teach. So when people come to you telling you, you ain't got to follow Jesus, don't follow Jesus. Jesus' words are not for us. You can live the way you want. You can reject the Holy Spirit. Just pray this prayer and just go live for the devil. All you got to do is believe that God is somewhere over the rainbow. I believe. I believe. I believe in a God somewhere over the rainbow, but I'm not going to follow him. I'm going to do my own thing. God, you can stay there over the rainbow. Just stay out of my life. I believe that you exist and that's good enough. So this is what is being addressed right here in Jude. So let's go ahead and get on with it here. Verse four, for certain people have crept in unnoticed, just as if they were sneaking in by a side door. They are ungodly persons whose condemnation was predicted 
long ago. So the people preaching this stuff, that you can live the way you want, just pray this one time prayer, live how you want. He says that the people saying these things, their, condemna their condemnation was predicted long ago. For they distort, oh, here it is. They distort the grace of our God into decayance and immoral freedom, viewing it as an opportunity to do whatever they want and deny and disown our only master and Lord, Jesus Christ. And you know, as I was mentioning in the live stream, that I encourage you to continue to read here in, Ju in Jude. Because it's not done here. He, he, he continues to describe a few more things here. You know, Peter said something about these false teachers. He says that, that they were born, this is 2 second, second Peter chapter 2, that they were born to be destroyed. Uh, Paul addressed it in Titus chapter 1, uh, verse 16. He called them reprobates, not producing any good work. In other words, not producing any fruit from the Holy Spirit. They, they, they deny the Holy Spirit. They live in their own life. They're doing their own thing. They're reprobates. But we see today that many reprobates are the ones who have the biggest followings. Many of the reprobates are the ones who have the biggest mic. We have many reprobates with microphones today. And they are drawing many, uh, many away from, from the faith with their charismatic behaviors. And unfortunately, as I get back to the, the question that I asked early on as I started this, the message today, tonight, or you can say today, it is today, it's still daytime, it's still light outside. Uh, are we going to make this about doctrine? Are we going to make this about Jesus Christ? Or are we going to make this about personality? Now, I'll say this. I'll never win any personality uh, contests. Okay, I won't. I'll, I'll lose every single time. I'll, I'll never win any popularity contest as well. I, 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 I will be at the bottom of the list every single time. But I, let, me, let me ask you this, this question here. Is the person that you're listening to and following, are they pleasing God? Do they have a heart after God or are they just here? Do they just show up because... They want the praises of men. And we have an epidemic of this in the church. We have quote unquote pastors all across, all across the nation, preachers and leaders, all leaders, quote unquote, all across the nation. They show up and they thrive off of the crowd. They thrive off of the followers. They thrive off of the accolades of men, men, men. They thrive from the butt slaps that they receive from people. Are you hungry for Jesus? Are you hungry for truth? Have you sincerely asked the Lord Jesus Christ to fill you with his Holy Spirit? Have you submitted your life over to the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ? Because if you haven't, then you're living a powerless life. I, I won't even say you're living a powerless Christian life. You are living a powerless life. Because without the Holy Spirit of Jesus, Jesus Christ in your heart, it is impossible to come to Christ. It is impossible to be saved without the Holy Spirit in your life. You can't reject the Holy Spirit all the days of your life and expect that you have salvation. And many people have deceived themselves into believing this. Galatians 5.18 says that if, if we are led of the Spirit, of the Holy Spirit, we're not under the law. Because it is the very Holy Spirit that leads us and guides us to truth. And that's John 16.13, that is which one of the one of the passages. Uh, verses that that states that John 16 13 says that the Holy Spirit will lead you to all truth so without the Holy Spirit in your life you have a one 
150% chance that you will walk your days in deception. And I'll say this, that the Holy Spirit will not allow you, if you receive him into your heart and submit to him, he will not allow you to stay in error and deception. He will convict you. When you fall, he'll say, get back up. But those who don't have the Holy Spirit, when they fall, they feel comfortable in the mud. They, sp they feel comfortable in the, in the clay, in the, in, the, in the mud pen. That's their home. But the Holy Spirit says, get back up. Though a righteous man falls seven times, yet he'll rise again. He rises again. He rises again. Yes, we all fall. We all make mistakes. But we're not a people who are going to relax in error. We're going to press toward the mark. We're going to strive. We're going to seek. We're going to keep asking, knocking, seeking. And know this, that Jesus knows all of our flaws. And he will continue to take you. He will continue to take me, me and you both from glory to glory. Today is the day to say, Lord, I want you. Lord, I want you in my life. Lord, yeah, okay, this this is this little thing that I've been doing here on social media, running around from channel to channel, hanging around, doing the, the uh, social media clubbing. It's been fun and all, but but see, here's the deal. I still have an emptiness in my heart. Lord, I need you and I want you. I don't want to just follow the crowd. I don't want to just be like everyone else. Lord, give me the boldness and the courage to take a stand. Just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did. Just like Daniel did. Just like the men of God, they had, the men and women of God, they had the courage to stand up and to follow you regardless, regardless of what the crowd says. Well, this is what I wanted to share with you guys today. I just, I just pray. I just pray that you have no shame as you seek the Lord Jesus Christ, that you have no shame that what the crowd's doing, that, that, that you have no shame in being rejected by the crowd is what I'm trying to say. Because believe me when I say this, you will be rejected when you stand up for truth. You will have people call you haters. You will have folks call you unloving. The devil is a master deceiver. And that's just one of his tactics to get you back in line. Oh, you're unloving if you stand up for truth. It's just one of his tactics to get you to play ball with the rest of the group. Today is the day to seek the Lord Jesus Christ, to follow the Lord. Even though people are saying this today, don't follow Jesus, which if, if that, if, I mean, that, that's like, it's like, isn't that like the simplest form of our walk? And shouldn't we shouldn't we at least have that one understanding that we're to follow Jesus? But when we're going to follow folks who tell us that we don't have to follow Jesus, I don't know what to say. I I, I just the, the, I, I I never thought I would see the day when people would fall for that. Well, anyway, that's my message tonight. I just pray that the the grace, peace, and love of our Lord Jesus Christ. Fill your hearts and guide you. God bless you and good night.